Welcome back to the new Yachtsman channel. The topic I'd like to address today is finance. Um, everyone's first question as a new Yachtsman is, what does this cost? And that is a really difficult question to answer, as you can imagine. Um, you can buy a 15 year old 50 foot boat, or you can buy a brand new 70 foot boat, and you can keep that boat in an inexpensive marina in Alabama, or you can keep that boat on Nantucket. And the prices are astronomically different depending on how you're gonna use the yacht. But let me just try to give you some averages to try to understand what the, what the overall cost is gonna be. Um, let's take a 50 to 60 foot yacht first that's slightly used in the one and a half million dollar range uh, used here in Florida as a second home. That yacht will typically have a home base marina. When I say a home base marina, um, you will likely find an area in Florida that you want to spend most of your time in for one reason or another. Maybe you don't know this in the beginning, but you very quickly decide that you really like being on the west coast of Florida, the east coast of Florida. You like a busy marina near a city or you like to be very remote. And once you find that, you will likely sign a monthly or annual lease to keep your yacht in that location. Once that's established, the yacht is much less expensive than if it's traveling nightly. Um, think about um, signing a lease on a piece of property versus staying in a hotel every night. When you are on the move on your motor yacht, you're staying in a hotel every night. You're paying a per foot charge that's relatively expensive per night to stay in that location for one, two, three days. You get a discount at a week, you get a discount at a month, and you get a discount for the year. And quite often there's an opportunity to actually own, it, own the actual slip. It'll still have a condo fee but you can own the actual slip that the, the yacht is kept in. And traditionally those have appreciated as the property around them has. So many owners in Florida um, own a slip at their base location and then they cruise from there. Quite often this slip also, if you own it, can be rented out to others when you're not there. Although the time when people want to rent, it's probably also the time where you wanna go somewhere else. So <clears throat> you never know which way that's gonna work. Um, Sometimes the, the low season in Florida, there, there are no renters. So you're going up north, everyone else is going up north. So there's really not a great opportunity to rent a slip in Florida in the middle of summer. <clears throat> but if you travel a lot and you wanna own a slip, it can make a lot of sense um, if you're there for say six months of the year. <clears throat> you can save quite a bit of money and it can appreciate, not always appreciate, but it can appreciate. The insurance on the yacht is a significant factor. It's um, thousands of dollars a month. That insurance rate is based on many things. And we're gonna to talk to some insurance experts in future episodes, but in general, um, it depends on where the yacht's gonna be and where the hurricanes are and where the yacht's gonna be and your experience level and who's gonna be running the boat and whether the boat is by itself or the boat is attended to all the time. So those are all factors that play into it, but. In your mind, you should expect that this 50 foot, 60 foot yacht is going to cost you a couple thousand a month, 3000 a month, somewhere in there. Um, you can also finance these yachts, just like you can finance a home, a little bit shorter term. The tr traditional loans I've been seeing lately have been a 20 year amortization with a five year balloon. So if you put down, um, 80% is the maximum you can borrow on a yacht. More commonly, people are only borrowing half or 60%. Um, and then it's a, a normal, normal interest rate, pretty good interest rate, similar to a home. And lots of my customers just pay cash for the yacht. They don't like to finance their toys, um, but money is very cheap right now. So I'm seeing a, a large number of people finance the yacht, even though they wouldn't normally do that. The other costs, um, you know, the, the boat has to be washed every week. Um, the bottom has to be cleaned um, and you're as a new yachtsman, you're going to have a captain's fee and a captain goes for about $350 a day here in Florida. And um, those are for days he's actually operating the boat. You can find someone cheaper to look after the boat. So if you're just paying someone to check on it, you're not paying $350 a day. But if you're taking the boat from Northern Florida to Key West for a week, 
you're going to pay that guy $350 a day plus plus expenses. Um, if you're traveling with him, you're probably just buying him dinner um, at the local restaurant when you're on that trip or he's going off on his own and getting dinner and billing you. And then you will have the cost of getting him to the boat and from the boat. So he will fly home or get a rental car or do whatever he needs to do. Now, you, again, you don't need this guy on the boat all the time, but as a new yachtsman, whenever the boat moves, you're probably going to pay someone a few hundred dollars a day as the expert that's okay with the insurance company, approved by the insurance company um, to move the boat because you will not be moving the boat on your own until you're proficient at operating the vessel. Um, other costs, maintenance costs, are, are relatively high compared to other things you're used to doing. Um, the motor yacht is really not a production thing like you're used to. Um, Ford and GM throw away more cars and crash testing than most yacht builders build in a year. Um, they're very custom. All the parts are very custom. The engines are hundreds of thousands of dollars total. The electronics are $100,000. So it, 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 the components, when they fail, are relatively expensive. The good news is they're very high quality. So um, you don't really wear out an engine in a motor yacht very often. It's very common to see a 20-year-old boat in the marina that's still running fine. Now he has had significant operational costs along the way. The engines require not only oil changes, but there are parts in the engines and the generators and the water makers that are required to be serviced every year. And it's relatively expensive compared to a car or a house. And you have to remember that this yacht has all the parts of a house. It has air conditioners and it has all the appliances that can fail in your house, can fail in the boat. They probably fail in the boat a little bit more often because of the environment. Um, so it's not an inexpensive uh, hobby. I do find that um, most owners that have gotten rid of property tell me that the vacation home in Florida that was only being used for four or five months of the year with its property taxes and hurricane insurance, flood insurance, um, and then maybe there was a small boat out back, um, it was actually very expensive as well. So um, the yacht is not as cheap as a house, but it's certainly um, less expensive than a house and a slightly smaller boat. And that's the compromise I found for most couples. The <clears throat> overall budget, um, as the boat gets bigger, of course, the costs go up. But I would say that the cost of maintaining the engines in a 50-foot boat versus a 70-foot boat could be identical, as could be the appliance failures or the generator issues. Um, a lot of the issues between this 50 and 70-foot range um, a lot of the components are the same. So although the yacht is longer, it's, it doesn't necessarily have different components. It can have different components, but the bigger boat is not necessarily twice as much money as the smaller boat in these, in these scenarios because they share many of the same components. The, the rate for washing a boat, for cleaning the bottom, for um, a, a, a transient slip rate, uh, is all based on the length of the boat. So if you are in um, New Jersey in the height of summer, you're paying six bucks a foot at the marina, it's six bucks a foot. So the 50 foot boat is 50 times six and the 80 foot boat is 50 times eight each night. Um, down here in Florida, when you go to uh, here in Bradenton, um, you're gonna pay two bucks a foot at the local marina. Um, so it can be very different from night to night. Um, Trips are expensive. So if you're already paying for the boat to sit in a slip in Florida and you've paid an annual lease, um, every night you are traveling, you are paying another nightly fee when you're in a marina. Uh, here in Florida, we tend to do a lot of cruising in the Bahamas and much of the time in the Bahamas for my owners tends to be at anchor for two or three nights and then a marina for a night or two. So it, it's very mixed. Um, part of the joy of having the motor yacht here in, in Florida is being able to go to the Bahamas and some of the less inhabited keys and anchor out and being totally self-sufficient. And of course, when you're anchored out, you're running your generator, your generator doesn't burn very much fuel, you're not paying any dockage fees, you're cooking on board. So when you're traveling and living at anchor, 
and cruising the islands, it's actually relatively inexpensive um, compared to marina hopping. All right, now I'm sure what all of you would like to do watching this is to come up with specific answers to your questions about what this, what it's gonna to cost to buy a yacht of this caliber. The first thing I think you need to do is create an Excel spreadsheet. And I've created a very simple one here. And one of the first values is the boat length. Many of the things in a yacht is based on the overall length of the boat. And that's how different vendors get paid um, differently for different size boats. So everything from washing a boat to how much you pay to dock it, um, the people that clean the bottom of a boat, the people that walk, that uh, wax a boat, many of them will base their fee on a set fee per foot. And then that per foot charge is times the length of the boat. So the first variable you'll need in the spreadsheet is the length of the boat. And for this example, I've chosen to use a 60 foot long vessel. There's a little bit of confusion here as well. Um, sometimes a boat that's called a 60 foot boat is really 67 feet long. Um, and sometimes a 60 foot boat is really 60 feet long. So it can depend on the vendor and what you're doing as to whether it's really the actual boat length or if you can get away with the model number boat length. Um, but every marine manufacturer treats the overall boat length a little bit differently. <laughs> Some things are based on the boat value, such as the insurance. If you watch the seminar I have with Jerry Norman about insurance, um, he gave us a really good um, percentage range for how much insurance costs per year based on the value of the boat. And this tracks pretty well. It's, you know, it's not an exact number, but it's a, it, it will get you where you need to be for the purposes of this spreadsheet. The first real monthly cost is where you're going to keep the boat. And I'm going to, going to assume that you're going to have a home dock. When I say a home dock, I mean the boat is going to spend many, many months of the year, or maybe you actually lease this slip all year. And that home dockage fee is one of your biggest monthly costs that's consistent that can be predicted. So here in uh, Boca Grande, Florida, the going rate's about $19 per foot per month. So the spreadsheet here says, I'm going to take the boat length, which is 60 feet times $19 a foot, to come up with a monthly charge of $1,140 per month. Now that number per foot is gonna be very different from region to region. Um, it's gonna cost a lot more on Nantucket than it does here on the West Coast of Florida. Even within Florida, that number could be twice that value in a very high end resort. Um, but you know, 18, 19, 20, $21 a foot is pretty common for your um, average marina here in Florida. So if you budget somewhere between $1,100 and $1,500 a month, that's probably a good number for the 60 foot boat. <laughs> um, things like washing the boat I put in here, if you're on the boat a lot and you're tinkering with the boat a lot, you're not gonna have to hire people to do everything. I have a lot of owners that actually enjoy washing their boat once a week. They get out there and wash the boat like you'd wash your car. If you've got the time and you enjoy doing it, great. But if you want your boat perfect all the time, then you're going to spend a couple hundred dollars a week to have somebody come out and wash that whole boat and wipe down the glass and wipe down the rails and make it look great 100% of the time. That's going to cost you about $1,000 a month in this size vessel. Um, the boats that live in saltwater especially there, even though there's bottom paint on the boat, the bottom of the boat gets very scummy very fast. And the colder the water, the less often you have to do this. Here in Florida in the summer, you've definitely got to do it once a month, maybe once every three weeks. And that is done by someone that has a scuba diving outfit and a brush and some scraping tools. And they will come to your boat, get in the water with their wetsuit on, and scrub every inch of the bottom of the vessel. And this is really important, even if you're not moving the boat. You can't let this growth 
build up on the bottom of the boat. The going rate here in Florida is between two and three dollars a foot and once a month is adequate most of the time. Again, if you're up in Maine for the summer, you may not have to do this at all for three months because the water's cold, things don't grow as quick. Um, if you're in Sarasota, Florida in August, you might have to do it every three weeks. So this is a variable. The electricity. Um, here in Florida, most of the slips and most of the marinas, uh, the per foot charge of $19, $20, $21 includes electricity, but that is not always true. Um, I have a boat in Boca Grande right now and I pay the 19 a foot and then I pay about $170 a month in August and September on top of that for electricity. The electricity in, on island nations is typically three or four times per kilowatt hour what it here is here in the United States. So if you go to the Bahamas or the Virgin Islands, you may actually find that if you're running the air conditioning in the summer and you're living on the boat, your electric bill can be almost as much as your dockage bill. And then in other parts, like I said, um, there's no fee at all. So the electricity is a big variable, but I assume you're shopping for a boat and you can check with your local marinas where you would keep it, whether electric is included or not. Here in the US, I think you can budget a couple hundred dollars a month for electric on top of the slip fee if it's not included. Just know that if you go to St. Thomas, it's a thousand dollars a month. <laughs> the insurance, as we found with Jerry Norman in the last episode, um, he gave us a factor of somewhere between 0 0.7, 0 0.8, uh, all, all the way up to 1% of the hull value per year. So I'm going to use a, a factor here of three quarters of a percent of the $2 million value. So when you build this spreadsheet, put in the boat value, put in this factor. And the way I got to this number was I took three quarters of a percent times the value of the boat to come up with $15,000 a year for my insurance. And then I divided that by 12 to come up with $1,250 a month. As a new, uh, a new yacht owner of this class without a lot of experience, when you move the boat, you're going to pay a captain. So a full-time captain could be, you know, as much as 60000 a year um, in this size boat. Um, I doubt you need to do that in the beginning. You're probably not traveling all the time. You're probably going to pay a day captain somewhere around $350 a day. And you're probably going to do this blocks of time for a trip. So you go on a 10-day on a trip, you take 350 a day times 10. That's a 10 day trip. Maybe you do that every two months. Um, and then you'll come up with this number. Uh, many people also will hire this guy to help look after their boat. If you're kind of an absentee owner and you live up north and your boat's in Florida by itself a lot, you may want to pay this guy to check on your boat once a week. So you take 350 a day times four while you're not on the boat and he's going to check on your boat every week. He's going to spend all day on the boat, check the systems, maybe start the engines, flush all the toilets, just make sure everything's up to snuff and running and give you a report at the end of the day. Very common thing to do if you don't live where the boat is. Full-time captain, really a, a tough, uh, tough to come up with a real number here. Um, a really a thousand dollars a foot was a pretty common thing back in the day, but you may not need someone that experienced if the boat's at the dock a lot. If you want someone to take you through the uh, the Caribbean, then you probably need a guy that costs more than this. He's got twenty years experience, and you know he's not doing anything for less than eighty thousand a year. So there's big variable here for your help. Now I do want to reemphasize that as you gain experience, you'll need less of this. So if you're buying a 60 foot boat, I really think that you and your wife, if you're fairly fit, can very quickly move the boat, short hops and things like that by yourselves. Within a, say a six month period, you shouldn't really need a captain on board unless you want one. Not difficult to learn this and make that transition. Now the traveling budget. So the home budget 
is, you know, your home dock where you are for months at a time. When you want to move the boat from Florida to Maine, and every night you're going into a new marina, you're going to have a per foot charge per night. So here in Florida, a lot of the non-big city marinas are somewhere around $4 a foot a night or $240 a night. Um, I have another note over here. Deland, Florida, the cheapest place I've ever seen, is in the middle of Florida when you're cutting across the state. That's only a dollar a foot a night. There are no facilities and you never want to stay there. But you will stay there on your way across Florida if you're cutting through what they call a Lake Okeechobee Canal. Um, Liberty Landing in New York last time I was there was um, this is actually in New Jersey, right there by the Statue of Liberty. It's $10 a foot a night. Um, so you can see there's a huge variable depending on where you are and where you travel. Of course, when you anchor out, you don't have any fee per night um, other than you're running your generator and the fuel for the generator. Again, the nightly fees quite often include the electric charge here in the United States. Um, Places like the Bahamas, they will tend to meter it. So it'll, it'll be the per foot charge plus metered electric. So after you go through all this, you should be able to get some totals of what your basic monthly cost is. I hope that helps you and uh, be sure to you know send me some questions with the links down below. If you have any questions about these items and um, be happy to answer your questions. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, I've got a more detailed follow-on video about annual maintenance coming up next. See you next time.